Greetings and salutations, DMs, GMs, referees, judges, game operations directors, and all other varieties of storytellers. This is your DM, Scott, and it's time for another DM quick tip. This week, we're talking about castles in Dungeons and Dragons. When one thinks medieval fantasy, it most often conjures up images of castles, dragons, wizards, armor-clad warriors, and heroism. But why castles? Are castles worth building in Dungeons & Dragons and other fantasy role-playing games? Here's my case against castles in D&D. One would think that the history of castles is pretty cut and dry, but at times it seems a little murky. We don't have enough time to get into the murky stuff, so we'll just move on. Before I go into an extremely brief history of castles, please understand that I am not a historian. I have a limited amount of training in history, and aside from my modest collection of history books, I don't have a lot of research materials on hand. Fortunately, this is not a research paper, and it's not being graded, so let's get into it. Around the 9th and 10th century, we begin to see the emergence of castles. Many historians will suggest that the construction of castles was in response to the attacks on Europe by the Vikings, Magyars, and Muslims, to name a few. With these attacks, there was a need to keep safe food, water, and other supplies. Oh yeah, people too. So these massive fortresses were constructed to defend against these attacks. Throughout the years, the castle grew more complex, larger, and better able to withstand lengthy sieges. Now along comes gunpowder. Well, the early guns were inaccurate, to say the least, but castles were pretty hard to miss. Gives new meaning to the broad side of the barn. But bigger guns were soon developed, and in the 15th century, they were used much in the same way that siege machinery was prior to that. So early cannons and other larger guns were used in place of machines, such as catapults or trebuchet. Soon the gun became the preferred siege machinery. And in response to the use of guns, we began to see round towers being built and thicker walls. Uh, The idea behind round towers being that the projectiles would more easily be deflected by a round tower. And the thicker walls, well, you could probably figure that out for yourself. Soon, though, castles proved ineffective against gunpowder, and they stopped being built. Sure, you got these nice castle-like country houses of the aristocracy in later years, but they appeared more decorative than functional. So what does this have to do with castles in D&D? Well, the answer is clear if you happen to have gunpowder in your D&D game. If you don't, all this does is demonstrate that something as simple as gunpowder can render castles obsolete in the real world. In a fantasy setting like D&D, you have to contend with dragons, which are an aerial threat. Not to mention that if your DM allows an air force of sorts in their world, then you may have to deal with griffin riders or assaults from other aerial creatures, thus rendering your castle ineffective. Let's talk about wizards, or any other magic user for that matter, and this can include clerics, if you will. Your castle has to be able to contend with magic, like fireballs, or... Repeated thunder waves if you happen to have someone like Lou at your table. What about a rock to mud spell? I think in 5e the version is liquefy, but in previous versions of D&D, one could turn mud to rock and vice versa with the rock to mud spell. Granted, this only works on unworked rock, but what is your castle sitting on? That would be an easy way to bring down a wall. There's also the case for underground attackers, monsters employed by the attackers to burrow under the castle, or maybe there isn't an actual siege. Maybe you just have to contend with burrowing monsters. That's not to mention teleportation, invisible infiltrators, high-level rogues. The list goes on and on. So do you need castles in D&D? I don't think you do. I have castles in my D&D game, which can sound somewhat hypocritical because I'm here telling you you don't need them. And yeah, it is a little hypocritical, but I don't need them in my game either. They are in my game because I want them to be. I just have a hard time imagining a fantasy setting without a castle. So how do I deal with all of these issues that I brought up? In my fantasy campaign setting, my castles usually have anti-aircraft devices, a special ballista that shoot lightweight arrows and darts at flying objects. They will often have a modified ballista or catapult that shoots ammunition similar to the ammunition used in naval combat to take out the masts of ship. You know those two cannonballs with a length of chain between them? A giant metal bola, if you will. My castles always have some sort of animal guardian, be it a dog or a cat or some other fantasy creature that could pick up on invisible infiltrators. And finally, if there is a castle, then there is always a team of magic users under the employ of the noble who resides there. This could be a team of clerics or wizards, you name it, but they're there. 
As for construction, well, my fantasy castles are very similar in construction to real-world castles. Their location is similar to where one would find a castle in the real world. My castle walls tend to go deeper. The walls tend to be thicker. And I've even had a few that defended themselves with magical force fields. You don't need castles in D&D. The first wizard would have rendered them ineffective, as would the first encounter with a dragon or a giant, for that matter. But if you want them in your game, and why wouldn't you, then put them in your game. Just modify them to your setting. Now, there are many ways you can justify castles in your game, and these are just some. We'll see you next time in the dojo. 